Item number SCP-152 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-152 is to be kept in a locked chamber in Site-49, henceforth referred to as the Reading Room. The Reading Room is off-limits to personnel below Clearance Level 2. The Reading Room will be equipped with one ceiling lamp, one security camera, one scanner, copy, or printer to be restocked with paper and ink as needed, one standard office chair, and one standard office desk, upon which SCP-152 will rest. When not in use, SCP-152 is to be turned to its last page so that any additions made to it can be immediately observed. A single guard will be posted outside of the reading room to deter unauthorized persons from entering the reading room. All personnel are advised to remain quiet if they are near the reading room. Description SCP-152 is a large hardbound book with leather bindings. The paper inside resembles vellum and is written upon in black ink. The contents of the book consist entirely of a series of entries that describe apocalyptic events, which are not always XK-class end-of-the-world scenarios, but invariably deal with the extinction of humanity. The entries are arranged in chronological order, beginning with an unexplained spontaneous failure of the Sun in 6000 BC and ending with other events close to the present day. Many of the entries describe apocalypses caused or facilitated by objects that are or were in Foundation custody, or are of a paranormal nature. There are also records of human extinction caused by more conventional means, such as nuclear warfare or deadly viral epidemics. Each entry describes in some detail the events leading up to the calamity itself, and the aftermath until the point at which the last human on Earth dies. It has been observed that the entries in SCP-152 change to whatever language the reader is most comfortable with, up to the point where the sentence structure can change significantly from reader to reader, or even begin using colloquialisms that only the reader would understand. Only the basic meaning of the entries remains constant. If multiple people are looking at SCP-152, it will read in the personal language of whomever began reading first. If no one is directly observing SCP-152, it will display the language of whomever read it last. Rarely, words will appear in the book that do not translate, and instead appear as horizontally arranged calligraphic characters, which have not been matched to any known language. To the best knowledge of Foundation historians, most of the information contained in SCP-152 is accurate, diverging only at the point where the apocalypse occurs. In almost all cases, the difference is that a few key decisions were apparently made differently in SCP-152's version of history, leading ultimately to humankind's annihilation. SCP-152 resists all attempts to change or write in it. Inks, graphite, charcoal, and other marking materials do not adhere to the pages and are easily brushed off. Lasers or other heat sources do not burn into the paper. Close inspection has revealed that foreign substances are stopped from actually coming into contact with the pages. At least five micrometers of empty space are always present between the pages themselves and any foreign materials that might come into contact with them. For this reason, SCP-152 does not decay, which also means that it has proven impossible to determine SCP-152's exact age. SCP-152 is self-updating with newly inked entries and new descriptions of how the last human died appearing at unpredictable intervals, always on the last page of the book. The date that a new entry appears corresponds with the date given in the entry for the death of the last member of the human species. When space becomes an issue, extra pages appear along with the text, and the spine of SCP-152 broadens accordingly. There have been several updates to the book since it came into Foundation custody. As with past events, SCP-152 has proven to be up-to-date on current events, until a point at which a catastrophe occurs. Because recent entries frequently concern entities or groups of interest to the Foundation, including the Foundation itself, SCP-152 is to be checked regularly for any information of importance. Addendum 1 With the acknowledgement made that letting this thing lie around where the public could find it is dangerous to us, is there any real reason to study it? Outdated hypothetical disaster scenarios aren't our concern. We've got plenty of real ones in the present to deal with. 05 Addendum 2 
The book is accurate enough about pre-disaster Earth that it makes a decent guide to the present. Plus, it gives a little perspective on the big picture of what some SCPs could do if they got loose. I think all researchers with clearance ought to read the last 50 pages or so just to drive home how important what they do here is. For want of a nail, and all that. Dr. Jansen. Addendum 3. Jansen. Half the entries in the last 50 pages show the Foundation screwing up and killing everybody. 05. Addendum 4. Like I said, it gives a little perspective. Dr. Jansen. Incident Report 152-05 On the night of the security guard on camera duty noticed that SCP-152 was missing from the reading room. However, by the time she had finished reaching for the switchboard to report this, SCP-152 had reappeared, and there was a new entry on the last page. As this was the fifth such occurrence of sudden disappearance and reappearance, a simple test was conducted with a high-speed camera a sensitive electronic scale upon which SCP-152 was placed, and an alarm set to go off if the weight upon the scale abruptly changed. The next three updates to SCP-152 all set the alarm off, and the high-speed camera revealed that SCP-152 vanished from sight for exactly one second each time. Addendum 5 I posit that the book isn't actually being updated as such. It's actually being replaced and each time it changes, we are actually receiving a new edition of it. I would very much like to find out where these are coming from. Dr. Jansen Item Number SCP-089 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-089 is stored in a special shipping container at Site-36 and monitored for locution events. Mobile Task Force Mu-89, consisting of personnel with advanced training in linguistics, psychology, and tactical diplomacy, has been deployed in order to respond to such events. Upon the occurrence of a locution event, Mobile Task Force Mu-89 is to translate and interpret the locution so as to identify the primary subjects of that triggering, herein designated as SCP-089-A and SCP-089-B, then execute Protocol M-8 which consists of the following steps. 1. Transport SCP-089 to SCP-089-A's location and explain Protocol M-8 to SCP-089-B. And 2. At such time as SCP-089-B is prepared to voluntarily execute Protocol M-8, render to SCP-089-B any assistance as SCP-089-B may request in connection with SCP-089-B performing the following actions. Inserting SCP-089-A into the cavity together with inflammable materials, such as oiled wood or charcoal, then igniting them. The successful execution of Protocol M-8 requires the voluntary compliance of SCP-089-B in a sober and uncoerced state. Likewise, SCP-089-A must be conscious and alert during the execution of the protocol. It is recommended that SCP-089-B be restrained, although not sedated, following ignition, so as to avoid interference with the completion of the protocol, as the process is extremely painful and fatal to SCP-089-A. If SCP-089-B refuses to voluntarily execute Protocol M-8 in accordance with the aforementioned specifications, MTF Mu-89 is to explain the prospective consequences of failing to successfully complete the protocol and make every effort to persuade SCP-089-B to cooperate. If MTF Mu-89's best efforts to persuade SCP-089-B are unsuccessful, SCP-089 is to be redesignated as Keter class, and Protocol M-9 is to be executed. The use of intimidation, threats, or mind-altering drugs or intoxicants in an effort to affect SCP-089-B's free will and any attempt to complete Protocol M-8 without SCP-089-B's participation or voluntary cooperation, or otherwise other than as described, are strictly prohibited since these measures invalidate the attempted completion of the protocol and are known to intensify the severity of the attendant Type S event. It is also recommended, although not a required part of Protocol M-8, to cause the execution of Step 2 of Protocol M-8 to be accompanied by the sounding of horns and percussion instruments as doing so may mask the sounds by SCP-089-A during the execution of the protocol. 
Upon a successful execution of Protocol M8, the related Type S event generally begins to abate within seven hours. Description SCP-089 is a glazed earthenware statue, approximately three meters in height, depicting a winged, bull-headed humanoid with an open mouth. The front of the statue's torso is hinged and can be opened from the top to reveal a cavity, approximately 0.6 cubic meters in volume, and can be locked from the outside. The rear of the statue bears an inscription in a Canaanite language, possibly Punic. Dr. translated an excerpt of the text as Nightmare of Moloch, Moloch the Loveless, Mental Moloch, Moloch the Heavy Judger of Men. The statue dates from approximately the 2nd century BCE. On infrequent occasions, sometimes separated by periods in excess of a century, the statue speaks. The mechanism by which these sounds are made is not understood, and the mouth of the statue does not move. The statue's locutions are in a Canaanite language, probably the same language as the inscription, and consist of the name or description of SCP-089-A, a demand for Protocol M8 to be accomplished, together with instructions for doing so, and a description of the attendant Type S event in figurative language. Each locution event is followed within a period of 3 to 11 days by the commencement of a Type S event meeting the description given in the locution event unless Protocol M8 has already been completed. Each Type S event is an epidemic, natural disaster, mass hysteria involving genocide or other massacres, or other event involving extensive damage to property and loss of human lives over a period of time that continues until Protocol M8 is successfully completed. In the case of each documented locution event, the attendant Type S event, while significant, is limited to a geographic area that does not directly affect SCP-089-B. This has, in some documented cases, resulted in the pendency of a Type S event for an extended duration of time due to SCP-089-B's unawareness of SCP-089 or of Protocol M8 or to SCP-089-B's unwillingness to undertake Protocol M8 in order to arrest the Type S event. For each locution event, SCP-089-A is a healthy, unblemished human infant or child between 8 months and 6 years of age, and SCP-089-B is that child's natural mother. In all documented cases, at the time of the locution event, SCP-089-A and B are each alive and healthy and experience a strong bond of trust and affection with each other. Following SCP-089-B's placement of SCP-089-A in the cavity and the ignition of the inflammable materials, SCP-089-A will burn and be destroyed over a period of two to five hours. Addendum 1. Memo to file from Dr. Garcia. While the role of SCP-089 in actually causing Type S events is unclear, Experience has demonstrated that the prompt and precise application of Protocol M8 is effective in limiting the damage that they do. Dr. Patel has speculated that SCP-089 does not cause Type S events, but merely anticipates them and provides a means to mitigate their effects. Addendum 2 A partial list of documented Type S events that were terminated by means of Protocol M8, including of documented completions of Protocol M8 that predate the Foundation's acquisition of custody, of SCP-089 follows. Date of Locution March 21st, 1788 Description of Type S event and locution event The flames shall consume their houses, yea, and their markets, and their temples, and all of their dwelling places. They shall be destroyed. Type S event Fire in City of Outcome Protocol M8 completed on Day 29 after locution event. 66% of city's buildings destroyed. Date of locution, December 2nd, 1850. Description of Type S event in locution event. The false prophet shall gather the multitude unto him and cast them against the princes. They shall each of them be slain and their fields made barren. Type S event. Large-scale messianic-based peasant uprising in an undisclosed location. Outcome. Protocol M8 completed on day 1363 after locution event. Massacres associated with uprising and its suppression and attendant agricultural collapse account for several million casualties. Date of locution, 
November 23, 1951. Description of Type S event and locution event. The earth shall tremble, and the seas shall rise and be cast against the earth, and the mountain shall vomit fire. Its voice shall be darkness and death. Type S event. Earthquake and volcanic eruption in an undisclosed location. Outcome. Protocol M8 executed within 31 hours of locution event. No tsunami resulted, although geological models had anticipated that one would occur from a seismic event in that area. No fatalities. Date of locution, November 7th, 1970. Description of Type S event and locution event. The rains shall scour the earth and sweep away man and his beasts and all his works. The deluge shall take them all. Type S event, cyclone in an undisclosed location. Outcome, protocol M8 executed on day 49 after locution event. Casualties from flooding, disease, and starvation estimated several thousand. Date of locution, April 4th, 2000. Description of Type S event and locution event. Data expunged. Type S event, data expunged. Outcome, ongoing. Protocol M8 not yet executed. Item number, SCP-090. Object class, Keter. Special containment procedures. Artifact is to be held in a secure bunker in the facility at site and constantly monitored by approved class D personnel. The object's new arrangement is to be imaged every time it shifts. New arrangements are fed into the facility's Class OT supercomputer. Division Chief is to be notified of all changes in current estimates every half hour. No personnel is to touch SCP-090, except under order undisclosed. AXA security level has been created for monitoring SCP-090. Non-AXA personnel found in the facility will be terminated. Description SCP-090 was located and retrieved in an undisclosed location on April 10th, 19... Prior to retrieval, SCP-090 had been located in a chamber at the nearby cathedral. SCP-090 was removed. The cathedral burned. Six monks and the priest were terminated. SCP-090 has been located at site since the retrieval. Object's initial location prior to the cathedral is unrecorded. SCP-090 is a black cubic structure, 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters, made of an unknown ceramic material. Object is classified as indestructible, following tests outlined in document 090B, unattached. Each side is divided into 10,000 individual squares, in arrangements similar to a Rubik's cube, 100 segments per edge, each segment 2 millimeters wide. Each square has part of a design etched into the surface. Etchings glow white. Unknown internal structure causes the realignment of a single row or column roughly every 2.8 seconds. Vague records of the object's alignments have been kept since 1242 CE, but those kept before 1533 CE have been lost. Modern technology has allowed the exact alignments to be imaged and recorded, as well as studied. Segments are divided by a thin white line, unless they are aligned correctly with the square directly adjacent to them. There are 22 correct alignments on the object's surface currently. D023016 is currently the only alignment of three adjacent segments on the surface of SCP-090. B100023 and C043077 are the four-segment alignments. There is also a six-segment alignment. Full item completion has been hypothesized to cause an unparalleled disaster to occur. Addendum Document 090A Dr. Experiment Notes Experiment 0012 Observation is going well. We have managed to develop a system to record and analyze the shifts in the cube almost as quickly as they occur. No correlation between shifts and any world events found yet. Experiment 0048 we observed a six-segment alignment today on the first side. It was noted and passed without incident. Two hours later, a research assistant returned from the break room with news that a tsunami had occurred in the Indian Ocean and caused hundreds of thousands of deaths and extensive property damage. No correlation is currently known, 
but we will make note of it. Experiment 0150. After our 112th alignment on the fourth side of the cube and 120th accident report in the lab, we are designating the fourth side as local and will implement safety measures tomorrow. Staff are discouraged from making bets regarding the outcome of alignments. Experiment 0172. A six-segment alignment was recorded this morning on the local side. As a safety precaution, site was evacuated. Two hours later, a containment breach occurred that resulted in no loss of life due to the evacuation. Object determined to predict events, not cause them. First side designated as global. Upgrade to Euclid's status requested. Experiment 0240. We stepped up our experiments today by attempting to modify the cube itself. When D-Class personnel attempted to make a shift, SCP-090 immediately created a 10-segment alignment of its own accord near the top left corner of the local side. Exactly two hours later, SCP broke containment and data expunged. Two agents were also lost during the incident. Recommended forced shift testing of SCP-090 postponed. Upgrade to Keter status approved as SCP-090 is obviously capable of causing events of its own accord. Object may be sentient. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.